Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the Lancashire Innovation Festival Manufacturing Day. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'm Melissa Conlon. I'm the Commercial Director of the MRC Northwest. We've got a really um, great Manufacturing Day for you today. We're going to talk to you a little bit about an update of the MRC Northwest. And then at 11 o'clock, um, we've got Jane Binion, who's actually hosting a panel discussion around macro manufacturing and a conversation with four of the region's micro manufacturers. And then at one o'clock, um, Alan Reed's running a network session for you um, about meeting the producers, so a manufacturing networking event. Then at two o'clock, Ian Minton is actually hosting the Northwest Aero Alliance. What does a space cluster mean for the region? And that's a panel discussion. Then at three o'clock, um, Skilling Lancashire for Manufacturing Future, which is hosted by Claire Whelan. At four o'clock, Sarah Kemp is actually going to be doing a fireside chat the Lancashire supply chain opportunities and what we got to offer outside the region. So why is manufacturing important? Why are we talking about manufacturing today in Lancashire? So just to put it into context for the uh, UK, um, at the moment the UK's um, output in terms of manufacturing is 1.92 billion, so absolutely huge. We're still the ninth um, leader in manufacturing in the world and we employ 2.7 million people in manufacturing today. So how does that work in terms of the context of uh, Lancashire? We're actually the home to the largest aerospace cluster here in Lancashire. We employ 38,500 people in manufacturing, which equates to 12% of our overall workforce. And the GVA share of manufacturing in Lancashire is a massive 20%. We've got key strengths in aerospace, automotive, energy, and energy. And what we've got is over 2,500 manufacturing companies registered in Lancashire today. And 500 of those companies are in the supply chain to the aerospace sector. And I think within Lancashire, manufacturing, you know, we've got a huge history of manufacturing. And it's actually in our DNA of making things. You know, we are a county of actually makers. So what's been happening in manufacturing over the last 18 months? As with um, you know, many industries, you know, very, very hard hit with the pandemic. And there's been a few surprising things happened within manufacturing. So if you think about technology and technology adoption, economic theory would actually tell us that there would be a slowing down of technology adoption during a, a pandemic. But what's actually happened, and the reasons why this would happen is you've got restrictions which have created negative effect on demand, which would be shrinking the GDP. Also, reducing of demand in products and services actually reduces the opportunity to get an ROI on the technology that you're investing in. And also, a lot of uncertainty in terms of the willingness to actually invest in technology. Cash flows have been hard hit through the pandemic. And also, if you think about sort of, you know, us as managers, all the time that we've actually spent in crisis management over the last 18 months. Um, and that's actually reduced our capacity for taking those strategic decisions in respect of um, actually adopting technology. So if you think about a manufacturer, all of those things against them in respect of adopting new technologies during this global pandemic. But what's actually happened? So what's the reality been? So what we've actually seen potentially is three years worth of innovation in just three months of the lockdown period. So huge step changes for our manufacturers. And what we've seen is manufacturers have actually been investing in new technologies to deal with the disruptions that they faced. Um, so investment in software platforms, investment in robotics. And what we've also found is the pandemic has been as much harder hit companies who are, who are sort of low tech firms. So companies have actually had to catch up. So those with the not very much technology have seen the need to actually adopt technology during this time. So what's really happened is what we've seen is 60% of uh, manufacturers have adopted new technologies. 40% have actually invested in new <coughs> digital capabilities and 13% have become process innovators. So what were the driving forces for these technology step changes and actually adoption during the pandemic? Um, obviously we've had massive disruptions within the supply chains. And what uh, manufacturers have needed to do is actually get some supply chain transparency. They've needed that predictability and also that flexibility within their supply chains. Also, we've all seen sort of the need within our workplaces for uh, compliance with social distancing requirements. So what we've had to do is um, sort of workspace reconfiguration. We've also had to track our staff around the buildings. 
and understand who they've actually been interacting with should there be a, a COVID outbreak within, within the manufacturing environment. We've also seen increased remote working and companies haven't actually stopped taking on new staff during the pandemic. So people have had to train staff at remote locations. And then also we've seen a need for flexibility to repurpose our production. Many of our Lancashire manufacturers actually answered the call to start producing for the first time <coughs> the essential PPE that was required by the nation. So what this has actually led to um, is a huge uptake of uh, technology. So if you consider supply chain transparency, predictability and flexibility, the technologies that our manufacturers have actually adopted to answer those, those problems, artificial intelligence, big data, digital twins, internet of things. If you think about um, you know, sort of increased remote working, we've all sort of started using the Zoom, we've started using sort of Teams, which we've never actually used before. And a lot of companies have actually adopted for the first time VR and AR to actually train workers remotely. But what does all this mean? Massive step changes for us, you know, sort of picking up. But what we need to do is we actually need to sort of make sure that all of these step changes continue, that our manufacturers continue to adopt digital technologies going forward. And we actually capitalise upon what's happened during the last 18 months. So that's really where we come in. So we're actually a world-class research centre for advanced manufacturing. We were established in 2001 as a collaboration between Boeing and the University of Sheffield. We're one of the uh, seven high-value manufacturing catapults. And we actually help manufacturers of all sizes to become more competitive and more productive by introducing advanced techniques, technologies and processes. And we're actually specialists in carrying out world-leading research into advanced machining, manufacturing and materials which is a practical use to industry. And it's that practical use to industry that's really important. So what we actually do is prove concepts and we transfer those concepts into industry where they can actually implement them within their own setting. Um, we we're, we're sort of employ about 600 people, um, advanced manufacturing researchers, and we've got centres in Sheffield, Preston, North Wales, Derby, Korea and Canada. Um, We've been on the ground in Lancashire working since uh, 2019. We've actually worked with over 185 of Lancashire's manufacturing SMEs to help them adopt new technologies and new processes. It's a really exciting time for the AMRC at the moment. We're just about to take um, ownership of our new purpose-built facility at Salmsbury Aerospace Enterprise Zone. As you can see, this is a great facility for us, absolutely amazing purpose-built uh, you know, built facility for us. Um, this is inside, this is our workshop. We're about to commission over eight and a half million pounds um, worth of equipment within that workshop. So um, we're moving things in slowly at the moment and we will take uh, ownership of the building on the 29th of October. A Couple of uh, internal shots of the building. As you can see, it's quite an industrial uh, setting as you would expect. So what are we gonna be doing inside this uh, amazing new facility? Um, We've got some key research themes within the uh, AMRC Northwest. So we've got battery pack assembly, additive manufacturing, so that's not just polymer based, it's also metallic based, robotics and automation, machining, um, every aspect of digitalization of manufacturing processes. So for example, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, another research theme is 5G applications in manufacturing and also net zero manufacturing and smart building technologies. And uh, cyber security, so um, the announcement that the National Cyber Force was actually going alongside us at Salmsbury at the weekend was, um, you know, was very, very welcome. And I think it's a massive opportunity for the region. Also, our building um, is going to be a low carbon smart building demonstrator. So what we're doing is we're actually going to be retrofitting smart building technologies into this facility. It would have been very easy for us to actually fit the technologies whilst the building was in build. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually retrofit them. And the reasons why we're going to retrofit them is so that we can demonstrate to manufacturers in legacy buildings that they can actually retrofit these technologies themselves. And what, will, um, you know, what the impact will be is by fitting these technologies is to actually lower the cost of ownership of these legacy facilities and also help um, manufacturers with their journey to net zero carbon manufacturing. So what we're going to be doing in this building is demonstrating how the use of connected assets 
throughout the facility can provide real-time in information um, on sort of real energy use and also historical energy use so you can actually adjust the adjust your buildings as you're working in them and what we're doing is we're actually connecting the whole building from the shop floor to the top floor and um, extracting data from all of our equipment and also what this will do within the office space and also on the shop floor it'll improve staff health and well-being as well so when you think about the MRC Northwest it's it's a new asset for Lancashire it's not just an advanced manufacturing research centre, it's an advanced manufacturing technology demonstrator so that manufacturers can actually come in, visit us and see what the art of the possible is and look to adopt these technologies within their own manufacturing settings. It's a low carbon smart factory demonstrator, it's a 5G enabled test bed and it's a meeting and seminar space. And what we really want to do is drive inward investment for the county. Um, we're going to talk a bit more about some of our technologies. So um, we've got a panel with me today of, of experts. So I'd like to introduce you to, to Siva, who's our head of digital. We've got Fahana, who's our technical lead in additive manufacturing. And I've got Ian, who's our senior engagement manager. So just like to start off first by asking um, Siva some questions. So, Siva, can you tell us about the uh, digital manufacturing research at the MRC Northwest? Thanks, Melissa. So, we are f we have a number of focus areas in digital manufacturing. Um, they include manufacturing connectivity. So, it starts from how to connect machines, devices, uh, using wireless or wired kind of technologies, um, and sensing and electronics. Um, we are also looking into different IoT technologies, um, how to use 5G uh, as a wireless technology here, and also um, how to protect all of those devices, developing sensors, uh, developing sensors that they, they don't exist or they are very hard to integrate within the system. So this is, this is a wide ranging area from um, the low level connectivity to uh, logical devices and sensors. So that's one area. The other area is manufacturing informatics. So once we've connected all the devices and sensors in place, uh, now we are in a kind of a high level platform, we can use systems. So these systems are ERP systems, MES systems, advanced uh, knowledge capture. Um, they, they, they're kind of trying to give you high level decision making. Um, so that's the manufacturing informatics theme. Uh, the next one we are focusing is our artificial intelligence. Now we have all the systems integrated, all the data is accessible from uh, everywhere. Now we can start to use uh, advanced visualization tools, how to visualize complex data models, how to uh, play with them, uh, and then you, you, you're trying to explore different um, uh, AI algorithms and tools and then trying to, trying to run it on your data, actual shop floor data. Um, there's another area, this is human machine shared spaces. So this is a kind of a future looking area. So in the, in the next five, 10 years, you're gonna have an ecosystem where machines and a human are gonna coexist in the same environment. So that touches upon virtual reality, augmented reality, um, um, how, how, how you can efficiently um, interact with the machines. Um, but again, like robotics, um, how can you live with robotics and all of them? So that's the, the, the other four main areas we are focusing from a higher level point of view. But then we are digging down into a number of small areas. At this moment in time, 5G is one of the very good example. Um, we've got this 5G test bed. Um, uh, to begin with, um, we can talk about it if you want to. Okay, so we all see obviously sort of you know 4G on our phones, etc. So what is uh, what is 5G and how will it help our manufacturers? It's 5G has been a buzzword for a, for a while. Now 5G is starting to realize its own benefits, and then we, we are now in the process of starting to adapt 5G for manufacturing. Um, Regardless we like it or not, uh, we've now moved from 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G is going to be the next generation connectivity. Whether we are ready, it's, it's, going, to be the, it's going to be the next 5, 10 years time. 
So it is, it, it's been told as a unique technology that's going to be um, um, become as a de facto connectivity solution for manufacturing just because it's got lots of elements that can really address the problems manufacturing industry has. Uh, one of them is uh, low, low latency and high bandwidth. The other one is like it's highly predictable. It's unlike Wi-Fi, which is something, yeah, you can connect to your computer, but there's no control. Your traffic will be reaching on the other, reaching the other end in, in, a, in a deterministic way. So um, it, it's highly predictable. And also, you, you, it's designed by, um, d designed with uh, lots of um, focus in the security. So you, you can you can manually handle what what device has access to and uh, who is getting the priority. You can dynamically control the traffic, and then you can prioritize one part of the network over the other one, and all of them. So this is this is this is a very suitable technology. The manufacturing industry has been waiting for a a kind of a connectivity solution for uh, the next generation manufacturing processes. 5G, in theory ticking all the boxes. So our research in this area is now, okay, it's, it's theoretically fine. We, we wanted to see it for real. We wanted to see in practice, uh, is it really uh, living up to the promises it's been given? Mm -hmm. that's, that's our 5G research um, in, okay. in level. Thank you. So we've sort of seen a lot of things in the media about 5G, and it's always connected to kind of large companies. So is it just applicable to kind of large companies and OEMs? It's, it's a is a is a million dollar question at this stage at this moment in time. But the clear answer is in long term, no, it is going to be for everyone. But we are now in the transition period. Most difficult time is the transition period. One, it's mm -hmm. once it's established, then it, it is fine for everyone. But um, the the current indications so or the current analysis show. Uh, it, it is cost effective than the other technologies. Uh, it, it is cost effective than 4G because because of the spectrum. It's got a wide access to um, a, a wide range of spectrum, so you can have private networks isolated. Unlike 4G, it's only the big four MNRs in in the country they have access to 4G. Uh, but 5G is like AMRC has got its own frequency range, so we are free to operate. Comparatively, it's much cheaper than mm -hmm. uh, a licensed Vodafone or three or somebody will have. Um, so it, it is it is for SMEs, but what is the pricing? Is 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 very difficult to give a solid answer at this stage. This is what we are working towards now. Um, it also depends on different models. Like, are we going to do a private installation without involving an uh, a, a mobile network operator? Like, uh, there are four big ones: um, uh, Telefonica or O2 or BT, uh, and then Vodafone and um, Three. Um, and um, uh, and EE, so the, 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 there, there are big four. And then there are also uh, the national activities trying to diversify the supply chain to uh, the smaller MNRs and smaller companies. Um, so the price is coming down, definitely. But then the real problem is if the companies are not ready in their digital readiness level, mm -hmm. Regardless, you are an SME or, or a large company, you've got a long, sure. you know, long gap to fill. Mm -hmm. So, so my just... way of doing that will be prepare, you know, yourself in that journey first, mm -hmm. and then when when you are actually ready to deploy five G, the price will be right for mm -hmm. you. So obviously, sort of, we've worked with over one hundred eighty five SMEs on the ground here in Lancashire. Um, and some of that work we've been doing is around their digital transformation. Can you tell us about uh, what we've been doing to help SMEs with their digital transformation? Uh, digital transformation is, is, is a kind of a really interesting area. We, we are researching into lots of um, technologies, uh, lots of higher level uh, blue sky researches and all of them. But then when you, when you try to go to an SME which is, which is struggling to pay the next monthly bills and all of them, now you start to realize that you know the there is a, there's a clear roadmap that's needed, and then there's a number of definite steps each of these companies need to take before they can have access to all of these uh, shiny technologies. So 
different companies live at different levels. So some of them are highly advanced. They have integrated systems. Systems are already talking to each other. Some others are like just they just um, they've just got different systems. They they don't talk to each other. And some others are in the far end. Like okay, we've just bought few computers. Um, so you know there are different levels. So mm-hmm. the the answer is is quite complex. So the way we approach uh, SMEs in this way, we we try to uh, meet these companies' needs by case by case basis, mm-hmm. because it's it's very difficult to um, put a, a you know a general formula to everyone. So it should be it should be a clear roadmap defined for the company. Uh, it's it should be bespoke, so it w- integrates very well in the processes and then the current operating way. So there's no point changing the whole operation just for uh, hey, I wanted to change digital. You know, so it, it, it's, it's a, it, it needs to be a tailored solution. So the way we do that, we go and talk to these companies, trying to understand uh, what they really need, where they are. We, we try to talk to their um, employees, the, the actual people who are going to use the technologies. They will tell you what they really need. Because trying to tease out the core problems is, is, is the strategy we follow. And then we, we kind of develop a kind of, OK, this might be the next one you need to do. This might be the one you'll do in the five years. Maybe in the next 10 years, this is where you are going to be. So we're taking them on a journey, in effect, aren't we? Exactly. So it's, it's a kind of a journey. It's not one-off solution, you know. So that's how we approach. OK, thank you very much. As you can uh, hear from Siva, lots of opportunities for our manufacturers in respect of uh, 5G, not just for the larger manufacturers, but also for the smaller ones as well. And I think uh, 5G in terms of the county has got lots of uh, opportunities. I'm going to go over to uh, Fahana now and talk about uh, additive manufacturing. So uh, Fahana, what are the benefits of uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing as some people call it um, for uh, SMEs? Thank you, Melissa. Um, I think a lot of people um, have heard of 3D printing. Um, they're in the news quite a lot. Um, but what we're here to do really is to try and, as Siva said, you know, um, get businesses to adopt to it according to their needs. So the benefits then for each of these companies or businesses, they, they differ quite a lot. Um, but the main things that we, you know, that, that we see through the collaborations that we've had with businesses, um, especially if you're doing a new product development or introduction, um, 3D printing is is very, very beneficial um, in a way that it could help uh, the first stage of your uh, design process, you know, so you could have, uh, you could use the printers to um, create models that you could see um, in your hand to see what your design would look like. Um, If you're going to make changes to your design, then you can quickly print a different set of models um, and you know you can iterate as many as many times as you like um, at a very uh, cost effective way. Um, the other thing that we also uh, use it for is also if, you, if you're introducing a new product um, it might be that if it's uh, uh, you know a small number of parts um, small batch then maybe certain 3d printing techniques are actually suitable for you to use as your end manufacturing so usually you know injection molding you use for um, a large uh, a, a, a big batch um, number of parts um, if it's more specialized um, bespoke components things like medical devices you know that you, you, you can fit around people's uh, anatomy and stuff like that um, then 3D printing have, have you know benefits in that way. Um, the other thing that we have seen a lot of uh, businesses also use it for um, that's very very beneficial is for custom tooling and jigs and fixtures. So this is when you know um, an off-the-shelf product wouldn't fit uh, your requirements, your needs. Um, if you need a special tool, um, a special geometry for your job, um, and you need it there and then or you need it um, a, a small number of it then that's when 3d printing or additive manufacturing comes in as well and i'm saying it's not just limited also to polymers because you know I, I work with both metallic and polymer 3d printers um so we, we you know we have got the full spectrum of the uh the, the more affordable uh printers and also the more industrial printers as well so you know that would suit um 
a big range of applications okay, as well. So, so we've actually invested very heavily in uh, additive manufacturing technology within the MRC Northwest. So Fahana, can you tell us about the type of research that we're doing with our uh, technology that we've adopted? Yeah. So um, we have got uh, a range of technologies, um, new ones and existing ones. So we've got um, new technologies that have come in, for example, our meld uh, process technology. That's the first one in Europe. Like we've got the technology in house now to be able to demonstrate that um, the use of that technology and that and that, and that machine to to potential uh, businesses. Um, we've also got um, new technologies like the wire arc additive manufacturing. So you know metallic printers. Um, uh, for, for, for large structures um, and the, the main aim is really to get businesses to adopt these technologies you know in, in whatever way in whatever size the business is so we've got a range of projects that we work um, with businesses for example um, with our industrial partners um, as part of the MRC we've got over 120 industrial partners the likes of you know, BA Systems and Boeing and Rolls-Royce. So we do process development for them. For example, if they want to try a uh, new material or new technology using our new equipment, um, that's the, you know, that's the kind of research projects that we do with them. Um, we work with small, medium um, uh, businesses through our ERDF uh, programme. So would you like to tell us about some of those uh, uh, sort of case studies that you've yeah, actually yeah. worked with? Yes, so for example, we've got a manufacturer that was testing um, a new alternative way to, to manufacture one of their products. So they came to us and said, would 3D printing uh, do this for me? So what we do is we take them on the journey of, OK, how does the current process work? Um, you know what kind of printers would it would would be suitable for that, and what kind of materials, and we produce samples for them. So, in a way, they get to they get to try out the process. Um, you know, work out the cost benefits, um, the easiness of using it, and um, and etc. Without actually having to you know invest in that technology, um, and and we do it we do it for them. So. Okay. And how do you think our new facility is going to benefit the manufacturing community? I think um, it will be a fantastic opportunity for businesses to come um, visit us, see the technologies, see the new equipment um, in, in, in real life, um, get to experience, you know, see how they work, um, get to see the, the possibilities, um, you know, we will have discussions as to what's possible for the businesses and the applications that you're looking to use it for. Um, essentially, you know, it's, it's, it's a free invite, I suppose, if that's yeah, okay, absolutely. Melissa, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, if you've got any idea, if you're think, even thinking about additive manufacturing, if you, you know, have any sort of interest to it, come and speak to us. Um, you know, we, I, I'm sure Ian probably will touch about, we'll be, you know, throwing events, um, workshops and stuff like that as well to, to get people to come in and, and collaborate. Absolutely, yeah. We're obviously, you know, we're welcoming. Uh, we want to welcome, you know, all of our manufacturers and into the new facility. So, uh, Ian, do you want to actually uh, <coughs> tell us about how businesses can actually engage with us? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Melissa. What what what's really important is we make it as simple as possible uh, for organisations to get in touch and understand what we we've got. So, opening up as many different avenues within within the team, we have an experienced group of engagement managers. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, who will who will go out and one of the important things is is helping to demystify a lot of what we do uh, for a, for for a very broad audience. Um, some of the technology, some of the languages we use can be very daunting at times, actually, and and feel far beyond the reach of SMEs. And so, what's really important for us uh, and myself, my colleagues Nick and Peter, the engagement managers, is to really work with businesses to understand what their challenges are. And then help to demystify some of the some of the uh, the technologies and the language that's used. I think um, it, it can be it can seem beyond the, uh, sure. the the reach of a lot of businesses. And actually, a lot of what Siva and Fahana have talked about can be distilled into really quite small, affordable projects that can uh, that can really help accelerate and, and drive their business. And so, in terms of how we go about doing that, you know, obviously we have information on our AMRC webpage. And that's going to be refreshed all the time with, with ongoing projects and ongoing um, 
routes to, to engage with us. If you're a Lancashire manufacturing SME, we have a range of ERDF projects um, that are designed to take you through the journey that you've talked about. So iterative steps, picking something that's small, achievable, and demonstrate to the business that they will get benefit from that, and they can implement that, and that can lead into, a, to, into further support programs. If you're a Northwest business, we have other programs. Um, actually, um, Siva was talking about digital transformation, uh, and actually, what does that digital transformation really mean to a lot of SMEs? And we're working with Edge Hill University on a project, uh, Manufacturing Connect, which is actually only a four or five hour bite-sized project that gives you the answer to those questions, starts to help to identify what those technologies are and how they may benefit your business. Um, so we're also very well networked into the likes of Boost. So if a business in Lancashire, um, a manufacturing business in Lancashire doesn't know how to get in contact with us, they can go through the Boost gateway. The advisors there are all aware of what we do and how they can get in touch with us. And they'll refer them to us and we will also do the same. So not all projects are going to be um, ideal for us at the beginning. We may be able to forward them on to other support that then puts them into a position to come back to us and we work with them. But the most important thing we've got, as you've already mentioned, a fantastic building, eight and a half million pounds worth of equipment that we want to show off. Absolutely. So coming yeah. in, yeah. seeing it in action, seeing how it works, and then talking to the engineers about what would be applicable to their business? Yeah, I mean, the whole premise of our building is this uh, open access demonstrator. So and um, when we say open access, we really do mean that. So we want uh, manufacturers to actually come in, see what the art of the possible is. They may look at a piece of equipment and think, well, actually, that's not for me, or that's not for me today. But another piece of equipment may actually be applicable to them, and we can actually help them implement that. Ian, do you want to just talk about the uh, main types of support that we offer our support programmes? Absolutely. I think. You know, we've, touched, we've all touched on it already. We've got the main four groups. So we've got uh, Fahana's here from our additive manufacturing group um, and Siva with the digital group and all things digital uh, within the manufacturing processes. Um, we also have a group that looks at machining. So they can look at tool selection. They can support you to identify what, right, what machines might be right for your processes, how to adapt those processes and how to, uh, uh, how to, to make the most out of the, uh, the equipment that you've got or identify new equipment that may support. And we also have our batteries and automo uh, automation uh, teams. So battery, the battery team is looking at um, battery cell um, uh, assembly uh, and novel technologies around there, which is obviously very pertinent at the moment. And, um, with the net zero agenda. Um, one of the really popular areas that the, uh, the batteries and automation team look at as well is, is the idea of uh, optimizing manufacturing workflow. So they can look at developing um, factory, factory floor layout and using the technologies that we've got to help to establish the most effective and productive processes mm -hmm. within there. But all through projects that are, as Siv has already mentioned, tailored to the individual needs. No one size is going to fit all. So. So it's about working with them and, and, and rolling them out the right way. And often the question that we get asked is, you know, how much is this going to cost me? So we do have some funding available, so I don't really want to mention that. Yes, yeah, so in terms of um, the funded programmes that we've got, we have, um, as I mentioned already, the number of the ERDF programmes. Uh, we have uh, a programme that, uh, that is a really good bite-sized chunk programme, which gives you about 12, 12 hours or so um, a raise, awareness of raising and almost um, good for uh, scoping out a more intensive project. And then we have a second ERDF project called Radar. The Radar project uh, runs up to about 50 hours and that's a fantastic opportunity to take what you've learnt in the first project and to expand that out into, into a, mo a more intense and longer term project. Um, doesn't have to be that, I have to stress. It can be two separate projects but um, it, it, it is a great way to take you on that journey. And we have the Manufacturing Connect project, which we already mentioned through mm -hmm. um, uh, with, that we're doing in partnership with Edge Hill. Um, the Manufacturing Connect project is due to finish fairly quickly. So there is some sort of time urgency around that. So if businesses are interested, then now's the time to, to get in touch with us and ask about that particular program. And the Manufacturing Connect program is really about kind of uh, understanding the adoption of uh, CRM systems, ERP systems. What we found, the reason why we developed this program was we found a lot of uh, small manufacturers were coming to us having gone to a trade show or something like that with a handful of brochures um, talking about ERP, CRM systems, etc. and actually wondering what to do. They've got this big stack of brochures, but where do you start? So the MCL program is very much about how do you start on this journey 
what are the benefits to have these technologies within your actual business? So that's really what the programme's about. It is, and just to add to that, within Lancashire there's a fantastic ecosystem of different types of support that will help put the building blocks in together to, to, to get this. So, so we um, are very closely linked in with Made Smarter, and Made Smarter have small pockets of grants that can help to uh, support the procurement of these projects. There's also the Lang Lancashire Manufacturing Grant um, that we can refer through to that particular project. Uh, but on top of that, there are programmes like our investment, the, the, the Lancashire Investment Readiness Programme for businesses looking for equity invite, raising equity mm -hmm. funding, m the access to finance, but all other types of funding uh, that are out there. So it's about helping those businesses to, to reach out into that network of support to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, thank you. Um, don't know if any questions have come through from the audience at all? Oh, okay, so. Yeah, thank you. Really interesting discussion there. So yes, we've had a few questions come through. The first one, have you seen any really interesting innovations come through during the pandemic that you can talk about? Um, we've seen quite a lot of uh, low carbon technologies come through. And also we've uh, engaged with an additive company in terms of um, they were doing something Farhan, do you want to talk about that one? They were doing something around... Um, Is it the same one? <laughs> yes, that one, yeah. So. Um, I think it was uh, a, a new product for sanitising um, to, to, you know, to, to help people sanitise better in clinical um, settings. I think what we have seen during the pandemic is businesses gain momentum much quicker. They've mobilised a lot quicker than they have in the past. And, and it's almost a case of needs must that businesses have have uh, looked at their processes and they've they've looked at new innovative and novel ways of doing things as much as anything else where they've got less staff available on the shop floor or they're having to make the most um, of the the equipment that they've got and, and some companies have obviously pivoted from their you know their manu or normal mm. manufacturing lines they've pivoted into producing the PPE yeah which is a new product for them mm -hmm. Great. And just to expand that, another question that's come in. Do you think Lancashire has reacted well to the pandemic and sort of taken the opportunities that it can? Um, I think, uh, you know, sort of in, in various uh, pockets as the rest of the country has. I think uh, I think the thing about sort of Lancashire adapting well to the pandemic, I think, you know, we, we've done as well as everywhere else, if not better than some places. But I think the key thing at the moment is those things that we've actually adapted well it's about sort of keeping those going. So this technology adoption and how do we make sure that any momentum that we, we've gained during that mm -hmm. um, time is actually kept up and how do we capitalise upon that now? So I think the next few mm. years are going to be very interesting for Lancashire in terms of how do we keep that momentum going um, you know, and how do we benefit for that? And I think um, you know, there are certainly conversations that I've been having at the moment. Another question that's come in, which other universities and sort of external organisations are AMRC currently working with apart from Edge Hill University? So we're working currently with UCLAM. Um, so we've uh, sort of obviously we've been uh, we've been located, co-located with UCLAM. So we're looking at bids, etc. We're also in discussions with Lancaster University as well. And how does the delivery of the programmes of work linked to support being offered around the region? Um, are there synergies for this and what are AMRC's sort of USPs in terms of skills? Do you want to answer on the digital side of things, Sybil? Um, from a digital point of view, the USPs are, we, we've, got, we've got a nice bunch of team. Uh, we specialise in the areas we believe that's going to be the next um, three, five years. So, mm -hmm. so say for example, we, we've got quite a, quite a lot of people uh, with um, natural language processing, so trying to understand what humans are saying. Uh, 5G, that's a, that's a well-known uh, area for us, like you know how to connect um, electronics and wireless systems. Um, We've got discrete event simulation, simulating the, the, the shop floor and all those things. Uh, we've also got, um, you know, standard integration, guys. So the integration is a, is a hot topic for these uh, different systems trying to talk to each other. So the, these are the main areas. Uh, the, the, the unique unique skill sets for us, like we, we, we just don't focus only in the digital. We focus digital and manufacturing. It's integration. Integration yeah. piece, because that's... Um, if you put it 
all together as an AMRC, not test, or even for the whole AMRC. Um, I think we sit in the middle of um, many, you know, industries, and also we 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 have very strong expertise in research, but then when industries wants to adapt it, there is a that gap to fill. I think that's that's our main area. Um, so sometimes, you know, rather than finding a, another company to or another organization to help us with the manufacturing process or digital process, we've got everything in house, so we can easily find. A specific person or specific technology yeah. within within AMRC already, yeah. and then we, we are, I think we started in two thousand two thousand one, and then we are about with eight people. We are about two hundred seven hundred now, seven hundred six hundred. So pretty much we've been through lots of technologies, lots of challenges already. So mm -hmm. there's a good chance we will we will have the skills that anyone wants to have. Well, you know, um, and I think from a skills point of view, you know, we're very much closely linked to. Um, larger manufacturers, we're looking at kind of how they're developing going forward, what skill sets they're developing and also what technologies they're developing. And then for us it's very much about sort of looking at those technologies and developing those skills, not just for ourselves, but also cascading those skills down into manufacturers of all sizes. I, I just add to that, you were talking about the synergies with other support offers in the region. If you look at, for example, UCLan, University of Central Lancashire, have got a very strong area around net zero, low carbon, um, with Professor Carl Williams, and they work with Lancaster University as well. Some of the areas that they're looking at for end of life are battery use, that complements very much what we're doing around battery cell um, assembly. And, and there's a real opportunity for us to be able to provide and complement the activities that are being delivered yeah. Yeah. by Lancaster University, by UCLan, and support the businesses and let them come into our facility and see them in action. Yeah. And yeah. Test them as well. yeah. Can I just add yeah, to sure. Melissa's, um, you know, the links that we have in the industry and cascading it into the supply chain? That's definitely one of the projects that we're working with Additive at the moment. Um, you know, you see Additive have been adopted by the OEMs, and so the supply chain needs to follow through. So that's sort of our role to make sure that you know they have the right knowledge and um, skills to to be able to have that conversation with the OEMs and work out what they need to do to be able to remain competitive. Um, in the future. Yeah. Great, thank you. And afraid we've just got time for one more question, and that is how can people get in touch uh, if businesses would like support? How can they get in touch and have a chat about how you may be, may be able to help further? Okay, so quite simple um, either directly through the AMRC Northwest website um, or through um, the Boost Gateway. Uh, we're also very well connected with. The different universities so just talk to the business advisors that are out there in the region and they can put them directly we put you directly in touch with us as well yeah we've just had a few unanswered questions just come in now which i'm afraid we haven't got time for but how can people get in touch directly for those so the best way to get in touch if you come through myself and my email address is i.d.martin m-a-r-t-i-n at amrc.co.uk and we'll make sure those are are answered Great, thank you. Great session, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks very much for joining us this morning and I uh, hope uh, you've enjoyed the session and found it useful. And uh, hopefully everybody will stay with us throughout the day for the other sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.